This is 4.1.3 F, and uh, this is dealing with the release of insulin from cells within the pancreas. So we have to outline how insulin secretion is controlled with reference to potassium channels and calcium channels in beta cells. Um, worth maybe pointing out at the start, this is probably the first of the videos I'm going to give you um, that I'm going to ask you to watch about um, hormones and also um, control of blood sugar levels. And this is actually part F of this part of the syllabus, but I feel it's a good place to start um, trying to get an understanding of what's going on. And we'll go back to some of the earlier points in the syllabus later on. Uh, worth noting as well that we have, um, it, it gives reference to calcium channels um, in, in the beta cells. And the calcium channels are in here uh, that you can see in the membrane. And this is going to end up doing a similar job to what you learnt about in synapses um, a little bit later on. So see if you recognise any of that. Just to familiarise you with the animation we're going to use, um, the blue strip along the top here is the membrane of the cell that's going to release the insulin. Um, so then outside the membrane at the top in this white area um, is just the exterior of the cell, outside the cell. And then the orangey yellow area is within the cell itself. Um, so first of all, just to let you know what cells we're talking about, I'm just going to type over here. Uh, these are talking about beta cells um, in the pancreas. The pancreas is um, an organ um, that lies near your stomach and it has a couple of different types of cells um, which take part in blood sugar, uh, blood sugar level control. And the ones that we're interested in are beta cells. So it's beta cells that release insulin. Um, there are also alpha cells, but they release a different hormone. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. So this cell in this animation is a beta cell. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, with um, the situation in, in this body, uh, with this cell, where glucose levels have risen. Glucose levels have gone up. And a fairly basic understanding of blood glucose um, control um, that you should already have will tell you that what the job of insulin is to control blood glucose levels and to reduce them, so taking them from a high level down to a low level. Um, it's important in your exam that you talk about blood glucose levels. So this glucose isn't going to be destroyed. Um, all that's going to happen is it's going to be moved somewhere else out of the bloodstream. And it's the job of insulin to do that. And we'll come across how that works later on. But this animation is just simply about how insulin is released. Okay, So let's carefully control to make sure we release the right amount of insulin um, at the right time. One thing that's not shown on the animation, which I'm just going to try to show um just again quite crudely but i'm going to use some blue blobs uh, which i'll just draw on here and these blue blobs are representing calcium ions and these calcium ions in the normal state of affairs um, what they do is that they move through the open uh, sorry my apologies they're not calcium ions they're potassium ions uh, these potassium ions move through the potassium channel and to the outside of the cell so normally speaking, this is before the blood glucose level has gone up, then the calcium ions um, flood down their concentration gradient from inside to outside. And what this does initially is it produces a, a membrane potential. So again, across the membrane, um, across membrane potential. So let me just write this on the side. Across membrane potential of about minus 70 millivolts. So a similar value to what you saw before when uh, when you were learning about nerves and action potentials. So that's in the normal state of affairs. The potassium channel is open and they move down their concentration gradient to the outside of the beta cell. So what happens uh, in a situation where you have a meal or you eat something sugary is that the sugar levels, the glucose levels in your blood go up. And what we're going to see happen as I play the animation at the start is that the glucose levels then the, the glucose in your blood then binds onto um, a glucose transporter protein which is in the membrane and that spins around and drops the glucose off on the inside of the beta cell i'm just going to pause it there and I'm going to write down a series of events for what happens over on this side so number one glucose levels in the blood and it's important remember to be specific about saying this is in the blood rise and glucose binds to the glucose receptor 
so, so, and it's transported within the beta cell. Okay, so that's the that's part one. So we've got high level of blood glucose. The glucose transporter picks up the glucose, spins around, drops it off. Um, and being a transporter protein, that's an active process. So it drops the glucose off inside. What happens next, and it's not really detailed um, on this animation, but down here in this grey box, you see that the, I'm going to play this again, that the um, glucose that's just been moved inside goes down into the grey box. And it goes through a series of steps which aren't detailed here, but I'm going to detail on the side. So the glucose that's come in, what happens to it next um, is that it's phosphorylated. Glucose is phosphorylated. As the name suggests, what this means is that a phosphate group is added. Okay, so a phosphate group is added onto the glucose. You don't need to know it in any more detail than that, other than to know the name of the enzyme that controls that reaction. So it's phosphorylated using the enzyme and glucose. Let me get my spellings right. Glucose kinase, or glucokinase, even it can be written as well glucokinase. So that's the name of the enzyme that controls the reaction that turns glucose into glucose phosphate. Glucose phosphate. So the glucose has been detected, received, spun inside the cell, goes down into um, where this chemical reaction happens, uh, controlled by glucokinase and turned into glucose phosphate. What's going to happen with that is that then that releases also, and you can see that on the animation down here, that we have a release of ATP. And that's particularly important for the next step. All of this really is just a series of steps that you need to try to remember. So part three, I'm just going to go back to the animation and press play. So ATP is released. And you can see on the animation the impact of the ATP being released. I'm just going to rewind. So the ATP is released. And that causes two things to happen. First of all, you may notice that the potassium channel, which previously was open, has now closed. So the ATP causes the potassium channel to close. And it also caused the calcium, um, the calcium channel over here to open. We need a little bit more detail than that. And the reason that that opens is because it's a voltage gated channel. Now, because we've shut the potassium channel over here, the potassiums cannot keep flooding out of the cell. So more of them remain trapped on the inside. So this is going to change the membrane potential from minus 70. So the membrane potential now changes to a value of minus 30. So it's not quite as negative as it was before. It was minus 70 before. Now it's minus 30. And what that means is then that stimulates the calcium channel to then open. You may be able to see where this is heading now, because you should know a little bit about what's going to happen when calcium floods into the cell. So part four, let's just carry on with the animation. Left hand side. So what's going to happen next? Calcium floods in, down its concentration gradient into the cell. There's a series of reactions that's going to be detailed on the um, animation over here. You don't need to worry about those in any detail. So next thing that happens is the calcium channels open in response to the change in the membrane potential. And then the calcium ions move down their concentration gradient into the cell. And what's going to happen next is just press play again. So we'll just let these reactions happen down here. Don't worry about the names. But ultimately, what's going to happen is that the calcium, let's just play that. The calcium, while it's playing, I'm just going to type over here. So number five, the calcium ions cause the insulin-filled vesicles, which is this blob, a red circle over here with the green blobs inside insulin filled vesicles to migrate you can see that happening here 
So they've moved to the outside and then exocytosis happens and insulin is released. And this goes on to another part which we don't need to worry about. I'm just going to rewind that a little bit there. Back a bit further. So the calciums have flooded in and ultimately the impact they have on the vesicle is it moves to the membrane exocytosis of the insulin and the insulin is released. So let's just finish off, drag that back, and finish off the notes on the side. So calcium ions cause the insulin field vesicles to migrate, migrate to the membrane where exocytosis happens and insulin is released. So needless to say, were you not to eat anything sugary and not have at high blood uh, glucose levels, then none of these events would happen. The glucose wouldn't bind to the transporter, the glucose transporter. Uh, there wouldn't then be this production of ATP using the enzyme glucokinase that we mentioned before. And if there's no ATP, then potassium channels stay open. Potassium keeps on rushing out. The membrane potential doesn't change. And therefore, the calcium um, the calcium channel remains closed and the calcium can't enter and therefore the vesicles remain within the cell and insulin is not released.